parish of St. Mary's. Uh, we're an un unincorporated area, so we do the local service district side of things, except for Pepper Creek, which is in the service, uh, local service district. Uh, Fredericton covers that because we would have to go through Fredericton to get to them. We started in 1989, 25 years ago. Uh, we just uh, just we're celebrating our 25th anniversary on, I guess, April 3rd. That's the date. And uh, in that time, our hall's already gone through one expansion, and possibly we'll see another one. The community's growing. We've got the new Route 8. That's going to open up more possibilities for people moving out here. So it's going to be a, uh, a busy time in the near future. I see you, you probably have more trucks than we do. <laughs> and I doubt if we'll ever see one of these in our, our uh, hall, but uh, if we need a ladder truck, we know where we can go. So we don't quite have the, uh, the buildings to require a fire truck. But that sucks. What do we do? Well, when we started in 1989, our primary goal was just fire, fire service, uh, house fires, gas fires, and that sort of thing, with uh, motor vehicle accidents close second. Over the years, um, We've expanded our ability to provide different services to the community. Uh, we have a number of firefighters who bo have both level one and two training. Uh, Ernie's just gone through level one. Okay. Uh, level two would be in his near future if he so requires or uh, likes to. But uh, with that, we also have medical first responders, which gives, it's like uh, standard first aid on steroids. It's a little bit more <laughs> emphasis on you know, what we can do, how we deliver first aid. And with that, we are able to help Ambulance New Brunswick. And one of our members here, uh, Diane McFarlane, is uh, with uh, Ambulance New Brunswick. And uh, she also helps us with our, our uh, first aid and first responder training. Something relatively new uh, in the last year or two is what's called off-road rescue. That's something we've been doing pretty much anyway. Snowmobilers get in trouble. ATVers get in trouble, hunters get in trouble. Anything that's not on paved or a, a government road is an off-road rescue. And so a year or two ago, they decided to bring it in to make it official. It meant that uh, in order to be able to do that, uh, incorporated areas are a little different than LSPs, but for us, we had to have a certain number of people with level one, with medical first responder, and the ability to field a team of five or six at any time, day or night, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Fortunately, we can do that. Our numbers are such that we have the ability to do that. That's not to say we don't need more people. And certainly having Ernie on board and Paul Somerville who's starting with us, that helps. So if anyone's interested, see me afterwards and you can get your name on the list, whatever the case. I'll tell you, you do get some pretty good training out of it. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's awesome training. Excellent. And, uh, it's all uh, it's something we're trying to do all the time, uh, broaden our horizons, cover different subjects, and what have you on off-road rescue in particular. With that, we have recently purchased a mule, a Kawasaki mule, a side-by-side, -side, a four-seater. We put tracks on it in the wintertime. That gets us off the road quite well. We also had a boat donated to us a couple years ago. The unfortunate thing with the boat is we don't really have the proper training, and that Part of that is the whole off-road rescue concept is relatively new and the appropriate training hasn't been really developed yet. So we're in the process of working with that. And, and really, the boat on the Nashwalk, it's only a springtime heavy water type boat, but that's not to say we couldn't help the city of Fredericton down in Grand Lake up back, back in pond if it is, requires it. Um, one of the things we just went through here a year or two ago was an emergency evacuation procedure. Uh, and we developed a brochure, and this was something that Elaine developed, did a very nice job. We started with checking with the Mounties and a few other uh, agencies as to what to do if we had to have a mass ex ex uh, evacuation. We had, uh, a number of years ago, we had quite a fire up on the Dunbar. Well, that's not to say we're not gonna have that again. And if that happens, how do we get word out to the people? A lot of houses today may not have adults in them during the day or after school, you may see just children there. And our concern was uh, with the concern about adults and children, how do we get that message across so that 
the children are safe and know that they can come with us. So we developed this brochure and uh, the Mounties were quite impressed with it and the other agencies were quite impressed with it. So that's something we put out to the schools that uh, gives the parents an opportunity to talk to us and other agencies to make sure that yes, it's legit. You know, it is an emergency, so please go with the firefighters or the Mounties or whoever, whatever the case may be. We have a fire prevention week in the fall out to the school there's a one day visit that uh, several of our members take a couple of trucks go up dress the kids up in fire gear they w what we're trying to show is you know when we've got all the gear on and the mask on we, we don't look human for the most part and that can really scare a lot of kids right so we're trying to get them used to that and we also do a, a, a fire chief for a day thing for the school and of course one of the things that's always after we're done we got to clean up raise stock and so on and that's that can take some time sometimes it's late nights or early mornings before we're done and you have to remember we're all volunteers right. and most of us work I mean we've got a lot of retired people which is great you know we're a little bit more flexible but some people tell me it's even busier when you're retired right Alfred right. <laughs> <laughs> so. and uh, as far as the hall goes there's lots of maintenance painting snow removal grass cutting proper operation and maintenance of the equipment because we don't want to find out when we get there that it's not going to work, right? So training, we do weekly training except for July and August to give everyone a couple months off for the summertime. And after this brutal winter, I think we're going to deserve it because it's been a pretty brutal winter. Um, having the training certainly looks good on someone's resume, I would think, right. because you've got all sorts of different types of background training, you've got the first aid, you've got, you know, you're safety conscious. I know a lot of businesses have safety programs and you would certainly help fit into that program. To be, uh, to be successful, we have standard operating procedures. We have everything from when you go to a fire, how the trucks leave the hall, there's mutual aid, which trucks leave. The large truck out there, number one, is not supposed to leave our area except for maintenance. And so we try to keep it here. It's our primary truck. We have just developed new uh, SOPs for high tension wires, the uh, transmission versus the distribution wires. We had a fire down here off Route 8 last summer. And it was a, a wire burnt through a, an insulator or something and caught the top of the pole on fire. There was nothing we could do about it anyway because the fire was way up high. And we called NB Power and they sent the wrong people because we didn't ask the right questions give them the right information. So now we're un you know, we understand how that works. That's not something that happens very often, by the way. Of course, there's a first aid training, and we try to work that into our different uh, training weeks, water source, wildland fire training, pumper training. And the makeup of our department is Fire Chief Adam Russell, not here today, he had to work, myself. We have three squads. Each squad has a captain, lieutenant, and firefighters. The beauty of having the squads is, with again, with the volunteer fire department, someone has to be around, you know, to answer the calls. We, we are dispatched out of Fredericton. When we call 911, it goes into Fredericton, and they dispatch us. It's, so it's through a radio system, so we respond. By having the squads, not everyone has to stay around over the weekend. It's primarily for the weekend, so people can get away, do something, you know, go visit family or friends away from the area and so on. And with the three squads, it means each squad's only on once every three weeks. A few years ago, it was we were down to two squads, so every other week we were on call. So it was a bit of a challenge by times. And of course, uh, Pastor Trails, our chaplain, and he's been a great help. We sometimes need to have the ability to talk to the firefighters after a particularly stressful event. We all hear, hear of post-traumatic stress disorder. It, ha it happens. It happens to us, even as volunteers. We get into situations that aren't normal, no way near normal. And when you think about it, usually when people are running out of a situation, we're running into the situation. Sometimes it's, you know, not a pleasant thing. So with Pastor Trail, and there's a uh, there's a, a small group of people that have uh, training within the department that we can call upon to help de-stress the individuals. And if that's not, you know, if, if, it, if it doesn't get to where we want it to be, then we 
you certainly have outside agencies that we can call upon. And the last year, that was two years ago, or the last year, we started the junior program. Some of the juniors are here today. That's been a great program. They meet twice a month, every Tuesday, or second, well, was it first or third Tuesday, or Thursday, I'm sorry. And they've come along quite a way. And one of the juniors, uh, Justin, has just joined as a uh, firefighter, gone through firefighter level one. So that's been a very good program. And of course, dispatch. And one of our dispatchers here today, maybe two, and uh, Ruth Russell, he, she's been dispatched for forever. And unfortunately, she's not here today, but uh, listen to her on the radio. Calms everyone down. Some people get really excited when they get on the radio, but Ruth's a calming one. She's a journeyman. <laughs> so recruiting, always people coming and going for many reasons. We lost uh, a new firefighter. He moved back to Ontario for personal reasons. You know, it's hard. We have, we have about uh, 20 firefighter level ones. Does that sound about right? All the officers. And we've seen a big change over the years. Like I say, we, we've been here 25 years. There are three original members still in the fire department. So that's a big change. There's been you know, dozens and dozens of people go through. Uh, some of them short term, some of them have gone on to careers in, in Fredericton and in Moncton for, for uh, firefighters, which is great. Unfortunately, we lose them. But I mean, you've got a, someone who, you know, they, they live and breathe firefighting and, and everything that that means. That's great. And of course, today, you know, the ability to talk to you, this, this uh, ability to put the word out that we can certainly use more if. if Maybe not yourself, someone within your family in the area that would feel comfortable. And it's not just firefighting. There's, there's a lot of roles that need to be filled, support roles, auxiliary roles. On a long call, was it a year ago, uh, this June, we had the fire down at the Old Gray's Farm. And that was a long day. And it was just nice to have people bringing something to eat, some water, giving ch uh, the ability, us the ability to sit down and rest and so on. And, and that happens not too often, but it does happen. So it's just nice to have that backup. We are uh, a limited department, uh, but we do some fundraising. And we, get, uh, we have a weekly lotto. I think most of you may be aware of that. Um, it's not doing too bad. It's been going on now for a few years. Uh, next Saturday, the 31st, is our yearly yard sale, pizza sale. There's a barbecue. You're more than welcome to come. It's 8 o'clock in the morning, 8.30 till noon. Okay. Down at the hall, we used to have it a week or two ago. I don't know if it's this weekend or last weekend, but if it's anything like these past few weekends, it's always been miserable weather. We kind of hope by pushing it later into May that they have some fine weather. Uh, but that remains to be seen. And, of course, there's a Musco Dystrophy Drive, one of the, one of the uh, organizations that... Uh, the fire service it really gets involved in is muscular dystrophy, so there's an annual drive for that. And of course, donations. Like I say, our boat was donated. A family in the community saw that we needed a boat after we had three floods in two years, and we had to call on outside forces to help us out. And so that was that was very much appreciated. Now, of course, why would you want to do this? Why does anyone want to do this? It certainly helps the community. It, it builds community spirit, but it certainly helps the community. When, when the fire department started, the, the big thing that brought it on was there was a fire that was witnessed, and Fredericton took forever to get there. All they got there in time to save in the basement. That's not to say sometimes you know things don't go wrong for us, but at least we're here. And it gave us an opportunity to build up a, an organization that's here for the community, now that the new highway is going through, we're going to have more road, more issues to contend with, I suppose. And But we do help Stanley out. They were up to McGivney a couple weeks ago to help up in Miramichi out. They had a really nasty fire up there. We were called into Fredericton yesterday. They didn't need us, but uh, at least they know we're here. We've gone down to the airport a few years ago, plane crash. <coughs> Scott's Nursery, big fire down there. That was in the heat of the summer. That was a, a brutal fire, very hot weather didn't have water there, so trucks were constantly shuttling water. But that's something that we can bring to this community and to surrounding communities, the ability to help. And 
That's the primary reason why we're here, is to help the community. And to make things a little more enticing, a couple of years ago, the federal government decided to give us a $30,000 income tax break. Who can argue with that, right? <laughs> so anyway, it's, it's, a big, uh, it's a big commitment, but there's a lot of satisfaction in what we do. And it's, it's I don't know, it, it's something that uh, if you have the time, and it's again, it's volunteer, so it's as little time or as much time as you can put into it. But it's, it's a very satisfactory, very satisfying calling to be a volunteer firefighter. With that, is there any questions? If not, well, have a nice day. Last couple of years, we were able as a congregation to make a donation to the fire department, and we're able to do so again this year. Let's stand this morning, we're going to sing another course, and then I'm going to get into the word of the Lord and challenge you this morning. Gordon was aware or not. Uh, chaplains, we have a network clear across North America. That's Canada and U.S. Just this week, we did lose one of our fire chaplains in Kentucky. And so, is that news to you, my brother? It is. I got the email on that. And so, uh, we feel for that department and their loss this week. All right. Now, hopefully, everyone is planning to stay for dinner afterwards, and right now, I'm the only one standing between you and dinner. <laughs> so I don't want to be long in ministering today, but I do want to challenge you, my local congregation here, Stanley Fire Department, National Rock Valley Fire Department. And so the, the text that I have chosen today is one from the scriptures where there's fire involved. Usually if you want to get something through to people, you find a common base. And I think firefighters are interested in fire of any kind. All right, and so that's where I'm choosing Daniel chapter number 3. And hopefully that's going to come up on the screen here in just a moment. And if you've got a bulletin on your way in this morning, it's faith and fire. How do we connect these two? All right, Daniel chapter 3, verses 14 through 29. Now, it's a fairly lengthy reading as far as the text is concerned, but I do want to read the entire thing to, to get you familiar with it today and then uh, challenge you from it. Nebuchadnezzar, now he was king of Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, that's three Hebrew children, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, 
do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now if ye be ready that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made well. But if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace, one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. He commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. And these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, their hats, and all their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, the furnace exceeding hot, the flames of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished. He rose up in haste and spake and said unto the counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. The form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. And the princes, governors, captains, and the king's counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was the hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed upon them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word, and ye yielded their bodies that they might not serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made a dunghill because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. I've read to you from the scripture and hopefully that is a familiar portion of scripture if you're Christian, okay? Everybody have a Bible in their home? And we want to establish something this morning before we get into the Word. How many believe the Bible to be true? That's most of us, okay? I'm going on the assumption of that this morning, that we that who are gathered together are Christian, regardless of our background or denomination we come from. Christian, believe the Bible to be true. The story that I just read to you was from the Bible. But it's going to challenge our faith this morning. You know... Uh, as time goes on, people are not churchgoers, don't tend to read the Bible anymore, and because of that, they don't even know what's written, and their faith becomes challenged. Okay, so I want to challenge your faith today. Lord, this morning as we get into the scripture, we pray that our hearts will be open to receive, 
And Lord, if you'll do that for us today, challenge our faith and help us to be more like you. And we ask in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. And so it is Fireman Sunday, and we appreciate you being here. We've chosen appropriate text from the scripture. We've got a theme that we're all interested in, fire. And Jesus himself, while he was here on earth, he spoke to people in parables. If you want to know what a parable is, it's an uh, earthly illustration to bring forth a spiritual truth. For instance, if Jesus was talking to a group of fishermen, he would talk to them about fish. <laughs> You're firemen today, so I want to talk to you about fire, okay? So as members of the fire department, we are usually interested in anything that has to do with fire. And there were some other things that Steve mentioned to us this morning we're also interested in. So I'd like to use this story that I read from the scripture in the book of Daniel, where fire was included to illustrate a spiritual truth. I wouldn't actually call my message this morning a parable, but I do want to make a spiritual application to what we read to you from Daniel 3 chosen that text it deals with fire and if you paid attention while we were reading this morning it mentioned a fire that was very intensely hot it was heated seven times to normally what it would be now something i learned in the fire department some of our congregation may not be aware of this do you know that water is wet that's profound isn't it but you know Wet water can be get wetter. They put a chemical in it and they call it wet water. <laughs> it's not redundant. It's really true. Now, if there's such a thing as wetter water, then surely there's such a thing as hotter fire. <laughs> and there is, okay? So this book of Daniel chapter 3, we took the time to read the entire text this morning to get you familiar with it. I was reading from the Bible. There are many in our country that claims to be Christian and yet fastly losing that status. But our Christian country, our Christian culture, our Christian community uh, don't seem to be familiar with what the Bible says anymore. And many have become biblically illiterate or unchurched, still claiming to be, quote-unquote, Christian. Now, I believe that claim to Christianity may be more from a family tradition than it is from a personal experience. But one thing that all traditional Christians will confess to, and that is the Bible is true. We tried to establish that here this morning. Even if you're unfamiliar with what's written in the Bible, you will agree that the Bible is true. So in the Bible, from the book of Daniel chapter 3, which you read to you today, there was a Babylonian king. Now the Babylonians weren't Christians. In that realm of Babylon, the king was Nebuchadnezzar, and he had built a huge image and this image was to represent their spiritual gods. And it came dedication time, and he wanted all of his realm to gather together for the dedication of this image that he had built. At this dedication service, an announcement was made. And the announcement was this. Anyone who does not bow down to the image will be cast into the fiery furnace. Now... Uh, whoever made that announcement on behalf of the king, they did understand there were more people in the realm who were not Babylonians. They knew for sure there was at least three Hebrews that were there, didn't understand their customs, etc. So we need to make something clear. Something clear, let's give you some instructions. You don't know how to worship this image? Well, here's how you do it. You're going to hear the sound of all kinds of music. Psaltery, the sack, but the dulcimer. There was other instruments that was mentioned there in our description. I like to call it Babylonian rock music. Okay? At the moment you hear Babylonian rock, <laughs> you're to bow down and to worship this image. Now, there were three Hebrew boys, and their names was mentioned several times in that text this morning. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. If you have a hard time remembering those names, just remember Meshach, Yorshach, and Abednego. Okay? So uh, these three Hebrew children, okay? And uh, three Hebrew boys, they had been raised in the Jewish religion, not the Babylonian one. And as a Jew, they were taught, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and him only shalt thou serve. So here they are in a strange country, strange culture, 
strange gods, and there's an image to bow down to that's not their god. Now, that's a, quite a predicament to be in. Has anyone ever heard the expression, when you're in Rome, you do as the Romans do? Well, here, if you're in Babylon, doing as the Babylonians do. But these boys were raised in the Jewish religion, Jewish language, and they were taught there's only one God, and him only shall. They learned that God to be the, not only the one true real God, but the one that is alive and well. And somehow in their heart, we just cannot bow down to anything else because the Bible, the Scripture, has, inst has instructed us in the law and its commandments to have no other gods before the one true God, Jehovah. It also mentions there not to bow down to any graven image that's made. Un and so they were taught this from boys on up. And now here they are in Babylon, and they're being commanded to worship something different than what they know to be real and true. Quite a predicament to be in, isn't it? So they remained loyal to their one true God, and they did not bow down to that Babylonian image. They stood throughout the whole ceremony, standing in respect in one sense, but also not to worship as in bowing down. Now, wouldn't you know it, there happened to be some spotters. What do I mean by spotters? Those that were watching, peeping toms, who also happened to be tail bearers. Now, if I could bring this down to our own local, you always know those that are always watching, uh, peeping toms and tail bearers. They're the ones that like to make trouble. They thrive on action of any kind. Well, these three Hebrew boys, they didn't bow. The spotters, the tail bearers spotted them, sent word to the Babylonian king that the commandment you give, there's some rebellious people in your kingdom. Wow, we're, we're on for a show, aren't we? So uh, Nebuchadnezzar called for three, these three boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and said, Now, boys, is it true that you have not bowed down to the image that I have made? I don't know which one was the spokesman for the three, but it says, Yes, king, it is true. We cannot bow down to that image. We have been taught different, and even though we're in a different culture, different language, different setting, that's just something we can't find in our hearts to do. Nebuchadnezzar turns to his servants. And he says, servants, I want you to go down and heat up that furnace seven times hotter. Then he turns to Shadrach and Meshach again. He said, now, boys, second chance. I'm going to give you another chance to bow down and worship the image that I have made. And I want you to hear the instructions in case you're a little bit confused. Now, at the time you hear the sound of this Babylonian rock music, Dulcery, summer, sackbut, whatever. You are to bow down the same as the rest that you saw where you're standing and observing. You're to do exactly that. Now, uh, I want you to understand something. Uh, I, I've used a couple of words here. Both of them start with B. Here's what Nebuchadnezzar, in essence, was saying. You either bow or you're going to burn. Isn't that what he, in essence, said? You either bow or you're going to burn. Again, I don't know which one was the spokesman for the three, but he said, King, we're not even careful how we're going to answer this. Our minds are made up. We don't even have to think about it. We don't even need a second chance. We're just not going to bow. If you have seven, eight, ten services, we're just not going to do it. We can't. We weren't taught that way. We have a very strong conviction about our religion and our one true God. And so Nebuchadnezzar asked him a question, well, who is that God that's going to deliver you out of the furnace? Spokesman said again, our God whom we serve is the one that's going to deliver us out of the furnace. But if he doesn't choose to deliver us out of the furnace, at least he's delivered us out of your hands. Well, here was a situation of a strong faith in the one true God that was not going to be intimidated nor compromised. Here we see three Hebrew boys that had faith that was under fire. They had faith for the fire. They had faith in the fire. They had faith through the fire. And they had the faith to live after the fire. It's wonderful to have a strong faith that sustains you. All right? Now, note what happens here. Some men bound these three Hebrew boys and threw them into that fire that was heated seven times hotter. 
the ones that bound them and threw them in themselves perished from the heat of that fire. Here's the king observing that his own men that bound these guys perished while they're falling down into the flames. It seems like what they were bound with burnt off, but they themselves were loose and walking around in the flames. And the king, he's just, wow, he's mesmerized at this. And then he asked the question, he said, there was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I think you count three. I see four. Uh, where did that fourth one come from? And he looks like, and I put this in phrase here. You've heard people call people son of something else, right? He said the fourth is like son of a god. The son of God, okay? And all of them are alive. They're not bound, but they're walking in the flames. And whatever was used to bind them burnt off, and they're loose, and they're walking. Now, when and however they were released and brought forth from the fire, not even the smell of smoke had passed on them, their hair, or their garments. I'm talking to you something about a miracle, a grand miracle that's told to us in the scripture. Now, let me challenge your faith here just a little bit. And I want to use an illustration from our own fire department. Uh, Charlie's not here today, but a couple of weeks ago, I was listening to Charlie tell a story about a house fire that he happened to be fighting the fire on. And there were bystanders wondering, why are you not going in there to see if there's any people in that structure? Well, there are several reasons why firemen may not go into a structure that's on fire. Number one, we have to consider our own safety first. This particular house was fully engulfed with flames. And uh, our gear... Bunker gear, whatever, you'll see faster trail after church downstairs, dummy. All right. Uh, how he's dressed, that's not fireproof material. It's only fire retardant. It will burn. <laughs> okay, so that's another reason. The second reason, the heat. We wouldn't survive the flames in a building that's fully engulfed. All right, and you notice this uh, furnace seven times hotter? Those that threw them in? perished from the heat just of those flames. Now, Charlie told these bystanders, he said, there's a third reason. He said, if there happens to be anybody on the inside of that building that's fully engulfed in flames, they're already dead. We don't need to go and get them. And if you stop to think about it, sometimes common sense isn't common sense. <laughs> you have to be taught. All right? We know by our teaching and training that usually smoke gets to them before the fire. They're dead. Okay? So those were three reasons Charlie wasn't going to into that building that was fully engulfed with flames. It's hard for us who fight fire and have received training on such to act or even to imagine somebody surviving flames. So you see, the story that I read to you this morning from the Bible, and we tried to establish that the Bible is true, we see here a story that may challenge somebody's faith in that they find it hard to believe that such a story is even in the Bible. All right? So unless you have a faith in God, a faith in miracles, and a faith in the written word of God, then this story about three Hebrew children walking around in the fire seems to be far-fetched. It's a story beyond reasonable limits. It's sort of like those fish stories you hear in the Miramichi. You know, exaggerated beyond limits. And So some may be challenged in their faith this morning to think that about a story that I read to you from the Bible. But hey, I want to remind you something this morning. The story I just told you about and read from the scripture is true because it is in the Bible. Oh, I should have an amen on that one, all right? It's true because it's in the Bible. You can trust the word of God. Well, is your faith under fire today? Somebody a little bit skeptical? Someone having some doubts? Do you find it hard to believe? Can you have faith in the Bible? I want to tell you this morning, you can have faith in the Bible, the word of God. It is true. So we have here three Hebrew boys who stood for what they believed. And because they stood for what they believed, their God stood up for them. 
Their faith was, our God's able to deliver us from the fire, or we're going to escape the fire. We're going to be delivered. Or, if we perish in the fire, at least we're delivered out of the king's hand. So their faith was in the direction, either deliverance or reward for perishing. And neither of those scenarios took place. Rather, what you see happen here from the scripture was their faith took them through the fire. All right, when they came out of that fire ordeal, they were unscathed. So their faith was under fire, but it wasn't threatened, and neither were they intimidated. Please note, these three Hebrew boys, they didn't bow, and they didn't burn. The threat was bow or burn. <laughs> they weren't threatened or intimidated. They put faith in their God, and their God came through. And notice what happened after that. Nebuchadnezzar himself was confused about the validity of his own gods. And he said in verse 29 that we ended with here, he said, there is no God on the face of this earth that can deliver like their God. And so he was willing to put his heathen gods aside to worship the one true God that these three Hebrew boys stood firm for. So now today, fire men, fire ladies from two departments, junior firefighters, you're here today. I thank you for coming uh, to this service in your honor. I want to challenge you today, okay? I trust that you know who Jesus is or that you're Christian in your faith. Now, whether you serve him or not may be another matter. Christianity for you may be a family tradition rather than a personal experience. I don't have anything foreign here this morning for you or that you wouldn't recognize. There is a cross that's behind me. That's not the one that Jesus died on. Okay. Too small. Uh, looks too plush. I mean, his was much more rugged than that. But no, we're not bowing to an image as such this morning. I'm not threatening any of you, trying to force nor intimidate any of you to serve God against your own wishes. We sung a song, Serving God is Beautiful. From personal experience, I'd like to tell you that I've known the Lord for a number of years, and God's been good to me. And serving the Lord is a beautiful thing. And I just wish everybody knew the Lord and served him like I did. So what I would like to accomplish here today is just ask you a question. Why not bow at the foot of a cross today? It's not the cross we're worshiping. It's the one who died on the cross. Why not give your heart to the Lord and be thankful for the salvation that he has purchased? All right? Uh, Concluding my message, challenge you by saying this, the Christianity, the Christ that I serve is real. It's not just a fable. It's not just a crutch. It's not a pie-in-the-sky philosophy. You can trust God and you can trust his word. Within the word it says his word is forever settled in heaven. There's not one jot or tittle that's going to pass from the law, referring to the Bible, until all be fulfilled. Every bit of the word of God is true. And I have found the, the Christian life to be an awesome way of life, and it's real. So regardless of what background you came from this morning, trust it's Christian of some sort, there's two subjects in the Word of God, and actually it's two destinies that come up all the time. There's a heaven, and there's a hell. Are you familiar with that this morning in the Scripture? And both are true, and both are real, because both are in the Bible. And I trust everybody would like to go to heaven, but you know something? Hell is there for a reason. What's the reason that hell is there? It's there for those who reject Jesus and his salvation. So I just want to put this out there in a gentle way this morning. You can bow before the cross today, or you can burn later. Wow. Now that's not a threat, it's in the Bible. The choice is ours. And so of all the folks that are gathered here today, I would think that we as firemen and ladies would not want to perish in hell or in fire. You say, why? We've been too close to it too many times to really want to go that way. Right? So I want to put your faith under fire today. You can trust the God that I serve. He's alive and real. He will deliver. He will take you through or he'll deliver you out of the hands of the wicked that would try to kill you. 
I have seen my God come through in many impossible situations. I believe today. How about you? God bless you this morning. Would you stand? You can have faith today through the fire. You can believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to save you from your sins. Be baptized in his name, filled with his spirit. Uh, there's a term for that. They used to say it's called a born-again Christian. I would like to tell you this morning, I have been born again as a Christian. Born of the water and born of the spirit. I wish everybody had that experience. It's beautiful. Praise God. Amen. Trust you enjoyed our service today. From the time you come in the doors, seeing the decor, the theme singing the worship, choir presentation from Stanley and also from our own Nashua Valley and the ministry of the word today. Trust we have blessed you and we do want to bless you further. All right, we're going to have a meal downstairs and I trust everybody will stay for the time of fellowship, uh, feasting, eat till you're full. Don't be in a hurry to go away. View the fire trucks and just have some awesome fellowship here today. Amen. We're going to bow and dismiss our service this morning and also ask the Lord to bless the food. Lord, today we're thankful for your presence that we have felt here in a very special way this morning. And thank you, Lord, for the willingness of both fire departments to come together for a fireman Sunday to be able to present their cause. And I'm sure in a congregational view, many have had their eyes open today of what we do. And it's not just fight fire. There's several other things that we do. And Lord, I pray that we have also had some mutual benefit for them today and expose them to the God that we serve, Jesus Christ and him alone, the God that's able to deliver from impossible situations, even from flames of fire. Oh Lord, let not our faith uh, be hindered today. Help it to be challenged and to grow. Help us to believe and to bow at the foot of the cross. And Lord, receive you as our Savior today, repenting of our sins and being baptized in your name and filled with your spirit. What a privilege. Help us, Lord, to live a Christian life as well as serve our communities well in the fire department. This morning, as we just dismiss from this service, I pray that you bless our fellowship together downstairs. The meal that's been prepared, may it be nutrition for our bodies and as to thy service as well. And we ask in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you today. We're going to ask our both fire fighting departments if they would proceed to